Uh, my name is uh, Guang Jiang. Um, uh, thanks for coming over. Even is spreading outside. Today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, NGS data visualization. Uh, my name, uh, I'm from Department of Medical Genetics and uh, CCBB. Uh, first of all, uh, this is the outline of uh, what I'm going to talk about today. First, I'm going to talk about the challenges in sequencing NGS, sequencing data visualization. And then next, I'm going to introduce some of the tools that is uh, uh, popular in for the data visualization of NGS data. Uh, there are lots of uh, genome browser are available, especially you know for the sequencing data. Uh, the most important tool is the genome browser. There are lots of browser available like uh, in, uh, C, NCBI and uh, uh, also Europe EK. Uh, also has a different genome browser, but uh, the most popular uh, genome browser I'm going to introduce over here is the first one is the IGV, Integrative Genome Browser. Second one is the UCSC Genome Browser. And the third one is the WashU IP Genome Browser. And all those three genome browser are linear genome browser. Uh, you will see that uh, it's like the gene, all the genome are side by side. It's a uh, cannot can hardly show the interaction between genome. And uh, another one, um, you know, it's a circular. It's called a circular genome browser. Uh, uh, it is circles. It's also very popular too, and uh, used not only in the genome browser in, in to make the figure for the genome. It's also uh, very popular in other fields, and uh, it can generate a very pretty, very beautiful figures. And uh, if we have enough time, uh, we also briefly introduce. Uh, some other tools like a web page plugin. You can embed the genome browser data, like the browser, in your website. And also, uh, another, you know, use a lot, we use the R and BART conductor a lot in the bioinformatics analysis. And there are also some packages in R or from the BART conductor can be used for the same purpose. So, first thing, what is a uh, data visualization? And uh, just like the proverb uh, says, a picture is uh, worth a thousand words. Like the, the data visualization is to convey the very complex idea through very simple figures. And uh, we can, you know, to uh, uh, form the figures, we can, especially for the uh, genome data, we can do the QC, quality control or quality assessment. And another thing is uh, knowledge discovery. And we have the data, how to generate the knowledge from, from the data. And another important uh, purpose is uh, for the communication, <laughs> like presentation and uh, paper publication. We need to have a uh, very good paper in the pub, in the uh, good figure in the publication. So, uh, so this is the process we how we generate the knowledge from the raw data. We have the raw data and we did a lot of data exploration. Like we generate a chart, heat map, or graph, or pathway, you know, all those figures to uh, explore the data and uh, to find the information from the data. And uh, we come to some explanation, you know, some, some pattern in the data, and uh, we come to some knowledge. Uh, however, you know, to generate uh, the figure uh, you know, a uh, very good figure from the genome data is, uh, you know, it's not a trivial task. It's very challenging, considering the data volume, data complexity, and the data sparsity. Uh, first uh, is the uh, data volume. Uh, from last few lectures, uh, you know, already talking about, it, you know, the first lecture about the cost of the uh, genome sequencing uh, decreased a lot from last, uh, several year, uh, last uh, years. A uh, few years, and uh, right now there are more and more uh, projects involve thousands and even ha half many samples in the sequencing. So here, here the figure shows the cumulative number of uh, human genome that is you know from last few years. You can see uh, also there are several. This is one some genome project and the TCGA and the exact uh, project. Some milestone projects during the process of the development of 
NGS uh, process. And you can see that the NGS data accumulate in a very fast speed, and uh, we have more and more uh, sequencing data. And, uh, you know, with so many, like, uh, thousands of samples, how to realize all the samples, you know, in, in one figure is very, becomes very challenging. Like, here I show, like, I think it's less than 20 samples. Each row is one sample, and uh, each, uh, you know, the, the, the color, the bar, shows the information on the genome, on the sequence. If we have, uh, like, hundreds of samples, it's very tough to see, you know, the, the pattern under the figure. Uh, so data volume is uh, very, you know, uh, big, has a big impact uh, on the data visualization. And uh, another thing is uh, data complexity. We have uh, like uh, high seq, uh, DNA seq, RNA seq, whole exon seq, um, chip seq, and uh, you know all those stuff. Different uh, sequencing generate uh, different uh, data, and uh, there are different patterns. And uh, from, we also have different uh, file format from different. Uh, uh, sequencing from different sequencing. The, with so many format and uh, so many data, it's really challenging to realize you know multi layer of the data in in the in the figure. So this is a figure from the Nature published uh, Nature paper published in 2011. Uh, this figure show there so show 17 string of mouse genome. So 13 over here and, and another four mouse over here and uh, the uh, each bar is uh, one of the genetic mutation in the genome, and uh, the link show how the different uh, uh, string of mouse, you know, close to each other. Another thing is that this uh, data uh, um, sparsity. You know, genomic data you can see from this figure there are genes, and also there are space between genes. How to sometimes when we do the visualization, we need to see the overall mean of the you know sometimes the big figure of the uh, feature in the genome, and sometimes we also need to to zoom in to see very detailed information in the genome. So it's kind of we need to balance the whole picture and the detail. So it's also very challenge. So that's a challenge in the NGS data visualization. Um, and next, uh, we're going to talk about the several uh, tools used uh, uh, a lot in the data visualization of NGS data. Uh, what is, uh, so that is a genome browser. So first thing, what is a genome browser? Genome browser is like we did a sequence. We get a sequence for, or for the whole genome or in part of the genome. And uh, we want to see what is you know, embedded, what, is, what, what, is, what, what are the code mean in the sequence. And the genome browser is like a, a browser to view all the sequencing in the genome. And uh, also, we want to see, like, we see some sequence over here. What does this mean? What, what is the function of those, uh, this, this segment? So we need an uh, annotation uh, uh, together with the sequence. So genome browser is like integrate both the genome sequence together with the annotation from different results. And we put it everything in one figure, and you know, can compare side by side. And we generate, uh, you know, find the pattern in the data. Um, there are two categories here: linear genome browser and uh, circular genome browser. We we focus uh, work on the uh, IGV integrative genome browser. So the IGV is uh, uh, is developed by. Broad Institute, they have a very strong bioinformatics group in the United States and uh, uh, develop, develop a lot of software uh, in the bioinformatics field. Uh, IGV is one of the one of the brilliant software they developed. And uh, it is a high performance visualization tool for interactive exploration of large integrated genome data sites. It is very powerful, even, you know, though, but sometimes, you know, the figure is not so beautiful, like, um, probably cannot be used for publishing purposes. It's, it's not a very brilliant, brilliant but it's, it is a very powerful and uh, has a lot of function. Um, so, and it supports a wide variety of data types, uh, even include an array, and sometimes, uh, like, signaling data, not mentioning signaling data, it's, uh, it will, uh, it, uh, 
support that. And it uh, also support like GWAS results uh, file to plot the figure for the GWAS result, like a hunting plot. If you uh, uh, see, you know, read paper about the uh, GWAS study. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, uh, user interface of IGV. So uh, the IGV has uh, several parts. The first part is two bar over here on top. And uh, also the chromosome ideogram over here. You can see the chromosome over here. And uh, that's bind uh, on the chromosome. And uh, there's a ruler over here. And uh, this part is uh, digital track information. Each row is one sample. And uh, this is uh, uh, like metadata information. This is a sample, ID, sample ID, sequencing track name. And uh, this is uh, uh, the annotation track from this part. And uh, this is attribute. The, there's also menu bar on the top. And uh, there's also, if you click right, uh, right uh, mouse, uh, right key, and you will see the pop, pop up of menu. Let me open IGV. You can see it clearly. So this is the IGV uh, interface. So you see this is the this is the two bar. That uh, first thing is uh, you have to load the genome, like the reference genome, uh, for the view of the uh, there was, uh, for for the to view the data in IGV. So to load the genome, IGV has a uh, uh, lots of genome embedded in the software. It's uh, it's in the server, and there are totally one hundred fifty five genomes uh, for uh, as of two thousand eighteen uh, August. And uh, you can also generate uh, your own reference genome for the purpose. Yeah, like uh, uh, several weeks ago, I'm I'm worked on the virus genome, one, one of the project. I want to see the alignment result to the virus genome. And uh, there are no software I can handle that. I can generate my own, like I have several virus genome and I combine them together. Like uh, each one virus are treated as one chromosome and uh, I generated the reference genome and load it to IGV and use it as reference and load the alignment rates to the reference genome. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I need to. Oh. Uh, yeah, let me do this. Okay, let me go back to. I need to transfer between. So, we, if you want to load genome, you can just click the uh, genome over here and uh, load genome. You can load your own file, like the first A file. Uh, or genome file as a reference genome. And you can also like you load genome from a, a server, HTTP for server or like public server. Uh, and you can also, most important, uh, IGB pr provide uh, one over 100 genome and you can just load from the server. And uh, even by default, you should uh, see one or one gen human genome over here, one version of human genome in here. If it is uh, you, like sometimes you work on the mouse genome and you need to load another genome, you can just click a genome and load from server. And you can just search over here, like um, 10 over here. And uh, you can just click and uh, OK to load the genome. But once in person, you have to keep in mind that every time you click, you switch to another genome. All the track you already lo load will disappear. You have to load the track. The next step, load the data file, the track file. You have to reload the track file. Uh, right now, I'll just work on the HD19 because uh, my track file are from the HD19. And uh, second step is uh, to load the, uh, the data, the track. And uh, you, there are uh, IGB provide a several options you can load from the local file, HTTP server, FTP server, IGVD server, uh, or you know, distributed uh, server like uh, Google Cloud and Amazon Web Server, you know, all kinds of service you can load the data. To load the data, you can just uh, click 
files. And uh, load from, you can load from the file that's load from the local file. And you can also load from the URL that's the HTTP server. And uh, also you can load from the uh, GB server and also load the encode project uh, files. I uh, just load one, like I want to load alignment, RNSIC alignment files, like for the first one, load. So by default, you will see all the chromosome for human genome. And if you want to see one of the chromosome, you can uh, click, like chromosome click over here, you will see the ideogram of chromosome and uh, but here, you still cannot see the alignment results for the chromosome because the whole range is too big and uh, to load so many data is kind of take a lot of memory of the system. So by default, you cannot see uh, much detail and uh, you can use the zoom to over here to zoom to some location. You can see right now we are working, we are viewing this part. Uh, on the genome, and uh, uh, you can zoom in and zoom out. You can also input. You can also input a chromosome location to view some special specific location. You can also like input one gene name, gene symbol, and to see the symbol, and for specific gene. And uh, um, right now I'm on PRCA one and. Uh, Oh, I cannot see any elements. Okay, it takes a while to load the data. And uh, you can zoom in, just you know, click on the left side and uh, then drag to the right side to zoom in this part. Like I want to zoom in this part. You will see the alignment, the rays aligned to the genome. This is the RNA-seq data. And, uh, uh, you can see much detail. And uh, when you right click, you can see some like the how, what is the mode of the visualization of the rays collapsed, <coughs> expanded, and squished. Uh, let's try this one. This one will take less uh, space uh, for the for the rays. And uh, uh, by default, the IGV will load two tracks. One track for the alignment. Another track is on top. It's uh, alignment coverage. You can see the coverage over here. Uh, IGV will do the down sampling. Some, sometimes we see like we probably have at this location we have hundreds of thousands of rays, uh, thousands of rays over here. And in that case, you know, it's very difficult to see so many rays uh, at this region. IGV will do the down sampling uh, itself, like uh, randomly pick up 100 out of 1,000 sample and uh, 1,000 1, rays and show the result over here. Uh, to save the you know the memory, uh, to improve the performance of the the software. Uh, so IGV uh, support a lot of uh, format like uh, BAM file, BAT file, and uh, mutation file, SAM file, um, weak file, uh, VCF file for the variant, and uh, a lot of files uh, file formats over here. So you can, so I have a, here I have an example to load from the, like I already put the BAM file, this is the RNSeq BAM file, and uh, I already put, uh, save it to a local, you can see this is the CTDB server, HTTP server, I can load it in IGV, like over here, file, load from URL, and paste the, the location of the BAM file, but you will need the index file to the BAM file at the same location, and the IGV will load automatically. And you can see this is the this is the BAM file uh, for my samples. The by default, the IGV will color the rays with uh, by the string like this. Uh, this alignment to the positive string and this alignment to the negative, negative string. And I will we, we use different color. And also, if the, like at this location, let's zoom in, you can see here it, it marks the 
some of you know this is a, like at this location is a, the the base are different from the reference. You can see the frequency of different uh, different allele at this location with the color in the coverage track, and also over here you can see different color. Different color are stand for the different uh, uh, base. So here there are some T and some uh, some some. Some C over here. So IGV support a lot of state formats. See here's the list. Uh, by default, IGV will infer the data format from the extension. Like if the extension is a uh, is a BAM file, IGV will think this is a alignment file. If it is a like a G, GWAS, IGV will think this is a like GWAS uh, results. And uh, also for different uh, file format, IGV will show, by default, will show different uh, uh, display, uh, like a heat map or alignment or annotation or scatter plot, just uh, based on the file format. Navigating uh, already shows this part, and uh, probably I missed this part. So if you click this button, you will jump to whole genome view, like all the chromosome. But you cannot see the detail because you cannot load like several gig, one or two gigabyte file. It's going to take a long while. So by default, it just show when you zoom in to a very detailed region, uh, it shows the alignment. And this is a, uh, you can click over here, you can also, you can click on the chromosome number, you can also like pick up from here, like I want to see chromosome six, and uh, I can click over here to see this region, and uh, still not good, I can zoom in this part by, you, by, you know, click, and select the region on the ruler. And also, yeah, I already show you can search with a gene symbol or from some location. And uh, here the button go back and forth. Um, this button differ from other gene browser. It's not go left and right, it's go back. Like the browser you used on, on, on computer, like go, go the previous page, go the for, go forward page, and you, you can see you go to the last uh, view and uh, the last view, and you can go forward. And uh, let's say, IGV also can do multi region view. Um, this is like uh, uh, because of the from chromatic interaction data, sometimes we need to put several uh, locations side by side, like uh, one from chromosome one, one from chromosome 12. We want to compare side by side. Sometimes we, we can, you know, it's not, it's better to view all those things in one window. So IGV can also do that. Uh, so you can search multi-region view. Uh, you can go to Let's go to IGV and uh, there's a region over here. And you can go to the gene list. IGV lists several, you know, has a, a preset several uh, genes and like uh, P53 signaling, they list the four gene over here. You can click the view button and uh, so IGV will view all those four genes at the same time. So this is the whole gene region, and you can also at this at we and at each of the region you can move back and move, move left and right to see different region, and also zoom. I think you can also zoom in to see more details. So it's gonna take uh, some while. You can also sometimes we are more interested in the promote region, and we can also see. 
uh, set up our own region to build. Like, so this is the promote region. And I, this is in the bad format. We already learned the bad format from last lecture. So that's the chromosome uh, star end and uh, name and some other information. And uh, let's, so this is a promote region of the same gene. And I want to view the promote region in IGV. Let me close one, one of the track. You can close, like, remove tracks to improve the performance. OK, uh, region, region navigation. We can, you can define the region over here. And uh, you can also import region. I'm going to use uh, predefined bad file for the P53 signal, signal gene promoter region. So I define the region as a, as a, the transcript started side, start side upstream 2500 and the downstream 500, you know, the total region as a promote region and the view over here. You can see, we will see this region. And I cannot see the, oh, oh this region is uh, it's this, this way transcript and this region, and also this region. This is, uh, to the, oh, this is to the left region. This one should be to the left. Uh, and uh, I already load the region, and uh, you can see the region. Right now, I have the region for those five genes, and this is a predefined region from the file. And I will select multi-region and uh, click the view. Right now, we just focus on the promote region. You can see this is the transcript star side and the upstream 25 side and downstream 500. I'll uh, show over here. So this is a like start, start region of TP53 and this is another uh, gene. And uh, yeah, that's for the IGV, for the gene set view. When you want to, if you want to go back to the, you know, the single window view, you can just click uh, uh, any one of those and to view that one. Like uh, over here, if I click this one, it will go back to the previous view. That's multi region view, and also there are lots of um, setup uh, options when you right-click the uh, mouse. And uh, let's take a look. If we are, so I already show you the option for the, to view the race, claps, the expand and the squished. You can see the difference and also group the alignment by different property and uh, sort of the alignment by with the star point and also color by default it's colored by red string and you can color by any of those and uh, also uh, uh, IGB provide by sulfur mode to highlight the region of CPG site, different CPG site. Like if you click you can see those are CPG site. Let's get to this. So after you zoom in very detailed, you will see uh, the, the nucleotide sequencing over at the bottom. So here it's a CPG, CG. And uh, this is the amino acid sequence for those gene, for this gene. That's for IGV, but IGV is very powerful. It has a lot of options you can see from the right click, uh, click button, and also it has a uh, you know the menu button on top. You you can do a lot of things with IGV uh, gene browser. Another very popular gene browser is uh, from the UCSC gene browser, and uh, it is uh, people use it a lot. and Hublab also use it a lot. Let's take a look. UCSC Genome Browser is uh, hosted by you know, UCSC. 
So it is a it, it performs the IGV. IGV is standalone. You have to download to a local uh, to lo local computer before you running the program. And uh, but you see, it's a online program. It, you can open anywhere. Uh, you just need a uh, use the browser to open the software. And uh, it the most important thing is it uh, integrates a lot of the annotation tracks. Uh, so this is the in interface of IGV. So it has a navigation tool over here and uh, uh, configuration track uh, configuration uh, over here and also the track hubs over here. It has a lot of information uh, 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 annotation tracks. And uh, let's take a look at the UCSC. So each time you um, open Gen, uh, UCSC Gene Browser, you better run this, reset all user settings, because uh, UCSC Gene Browser will keep track of what you have viewed last time. And uh, every time you open IGV, it will open previous uh, view of the genome. And uh, it's better you know, you reset all the settings, and uh, it will come to uh, this page, and uh, you can see there are uh, lots of organisms over here, include uh, all different all different types of, uh, include the virus, and uh, human, animal, plant, um, is it a plant? I did not see plant. Um, organism genome over here. So let's take a look, the human genome. You can click over here, or click over here, pick up the version of the genome. And uh, today I will focus on HG19. So this is a, this is a user interface for the genome browser, UCSC genome browser. The top part has the, you know, the, the all kinds of tracks and uh, navigation tools. And uh, this part is the configuration. You can see track search, uh, loaded with default track and uh, default order, you can hide all the tracks. So each track in Genome Browser, each track is one exper experiment or one sample. And uh, on track, there are, kind, there are different kind of uh, information. You can see some track, uh, so this is a, the first one is a sequence. If you zoom to very detailed uh, scale, you can see the ATGC, the sequence of the genome. And uh, so this is the referencing, referencing, and also there are, so this is the from GTEx, the gene fashion uh, profile. And also there are lots of uh, tracks over here. And if you go down, you can see the track hub. UCSC invited a lot of tracks like gene and gene prediction, phenotype and the literature, also expression uh, tag expression profile from GTEx and the regulation from ENCODE and also comparative genomics data. There are lots of like the variant information over here, which if you are interested in any of those, you can just click and pick up one of the mode. And uh, like I want to show squished view of ensemble gene and uh, click the refresh the ensemble annotation track will show. So it's, it's, it's show over here. The navigation is uh, very straightforward. And uh, if you ever use one of the gene browser, it should, you know, you will be able to handle the uh, the, na the navigation, you can like move 50, 95% to the left, move to the right. And uh, this is zoom, zoom in to see more details and uh, uh, zoom out. Also, you can input a uh, location over here, uh, over here. Like if you want to see chromosome one, two, and then click 
go, this browser will take you to the location. And you can also input, uh, just like a DB, you can input a gene name. Over here, gene symbol over here, you can see, you can search the gene name, and you will got a long list of all different annotations, and you can click one of them and go back to the to view the sequencing of that gene. And and uh, same as the uh, IGB, you can like select the region, like this region, and uh, click the zoom in to see more t detail in specific region. So this is, uh, you know, all of those are, from, are provided by UCSC, all kinds of different annotation track. And sometimes we want to view our own tracks, you can upload your custom tracks. You can upload um, your own customer tracks. I think uh, UCSC Gene Browser support also support a lot of uh, different file format. Uh, it's not so long like IGB, but that included the most common used file format. Uh, include the BAM file, BAT file, VCF file, big WIG file, and uh, GFF file, big BAT, all those information. Um, and uh, also the custom track, if you put the custom track in the HTTP server, you can, after you upload the track to UCSC Gene Browser, you can share the track with some with other people, like your collaborate, um, to view some specific region for the specific track. Let's take a look at the INSIG BAM file. I have it um, in my in one of the our server is in CTDB. To upload the custom track, you can click uh, uh, over here, add a custom track. You can, for the BAM file, you have to provide the link. Uh, you can, you can for the BAT file, you can just paste the BAT file in container of the BAT file, because BAT file just defines the uh, region of interest. But for BAM file, usually it's very big, and uh, each single file is like several gigabytes. And you cannot uh, upload it. You have to provide a HTTP server and uh, save it in, in the server and provide a link to the server. So I already have the files ready, and I uh, just provide those information, like uh, track type, name, description, and also, in, most important, the link to the file and some like version of genome and some other information. And uh, I just paste this part over here and click Submit. Oh, already have one. I think uh, the when I paste, uh, I paste everything in one line and uh, I submit another two line. So right now we I have uh, three to one three tracks or three samples of the RNC, and uh, let's go back to the Gene Browser. This is uh, S one and this is S2, and this is S3. This is the RNC. You can see this is one of the axon. You can see rays aligned to the axon at this region. It's uh, very similar to IGB. And uh, you can share, like, I have the have my track uploaded to server. You can share just you know just copy the like I have I have the link, right? I have link and I 
Right now, I'm opening a specific region at this location. This is the BRC1, one of the XR, and I want to share this with another person. So I have two brothers, and uh, let's take a look if they interfere with each other. Let's um, open the same version of HD19. You can see here, you there's no custom trap over here. And uh, if uh, even are closed, if I close the browser, I still have, you know, it, it is still taking me to the same same location. Because I did not clean up the the, the, the the track. So you can see here on the same browser, same computer, and I always open the same region. But I want to share this region to someone else and I will like simulate it, like uh, send the link to someone else and someone else open on another computer and uh, the link. Like they will see the same view as I see on my computer. Uh, but the problem with this is that this is like temporarily uh, track, and the uh, UCC just hold it for for the hour, for the eight hours. Once uh, nobody accesses the track anymore, you know UCC just delete everything, and even the person has a link, he still cannot access the data. So in that uh, in that way, so we need. Uh, somehow to save the session information and share this with someone else. And the UCSC provide a session. So first, you have to create an account. To see my session, you have to uh, put your mouse over here and you see my session. And uh, the shortcut is uh, SS. And open the my session, you have to create a, an account in UCSC. UCSC and sign in. After that, you, like I can say, HDNATIN lecture and uh, save it as this. So this is uh, my new view a few minutes ago, and I can email the view to to my collaborator. Just click the email. Um, so you can see this is the link in the email. The, the people who have the link will be able to, uh, to see the same view. Let's copy this and uh, go back to CSC. Brother, and uh, I'm going to clean up the everything or reset all the settings. And uh, you can see I uh, no longer have the previous view. And I have the view from the from the session, the link from the session. You can see I can go back to the to the to the view of that region. And uh, because I save it in the session, and it it is always there, even after forty hour, forty eight hours. So you can also save the track uh, in an individual file, and uh, you know to share with people. Uh, another way, you know, you can also share with people in this way, like in provide a, a link to UCS Gene Browser plus information like a database, position, and a custom track. In this way, you can share with people the track directly with, without save to a session or save to a to, View. And you can always, as long as your bed file, the BAM file is available in your server, you know, accessible from the UCSC browser, you can always open the BAM file uh, from the, with the link. So this is uh, how to create a long-term sharing session and uh, share it with people. Uh, I'll show that. Uh, UCSC also provides some tools for the for the 
uh, for the to view the data, some more detail in the data. First one is the blood. So in in UCSC gene browser, you can search like a gene symbol, and but you it's sometimes you have only a sequence, and you don't know where the sequence is from, and uh, you cannot search the gene name. You cannot search you know, input the location, and in that way, you can go to the two plot and run the plot like the alarming. So I have uh, I cut uh, some of the sequence from the BRC1 gene and I will paste. I paste uh, the sequence to blood from UCSC browser and sum it. You can see the results of the alarming. So total length is uh, 500 and uh, it's 100 perfect match to to this region. And uh, I will go to browser to see the uh, alignment. So this is uh, my sequence. It is aligned to BRC1, to the one of the axon region. So in that way, you know, you can it provide the you know ability to search a sequence instead of you know to search the gene symbol. Sometimes you probably only had the had the sequence and you can search. I forgot to mention that it is uh, IGV also has that embedded in IGV, but the function is provided by UCSC. You can see you can run the Simpson blood over here and you can paste your sequencing. And you can see you got the same, exactly the same, because the result is provided by UCSC. Blight itself, the IGV itself does not have the function. It, it runs, uh, but it will go back to, when you click one of the alignment results, it will go back to the IGV view of the alignment. So this is your search uh, sequence. And uh, another very popular tool is a uh, table browser. So you you can you are, we already see that UCSC gene browser has a lot of annotation track. And uh, let's go back. A lot of annotation track over here, like uh, gene annotation and the encode project annotation for the function of the gene sequence. And sometimes we need more detail, like the sequence or something, the location for those for those uh, annotation track. And uh, we can go to the table browser. Table browser pro provides the same data used for the visualization of the gene browser. And uh, like I want the uh, human gene start and end site, and I can just go to the mammal human. And I want to the assembly HD19 or HD38, and depends on, and I just focus on the gene and the gene prediction, and uh, focus on ref gene, and uh, use our ref, ref seq all table, and uh, across all the whole genome region. Uh, I want output as a bad file. And you can output it to a file for the download. You can just go output to output to the screen. And uh, here I want the whole gene. Sometimes you can extend it to upstream or you know far utr or something else. And uh, you can click go back, go go back. So it will generate the table for what you. Uh, request like all the gene, all the ref gene annotation from the chromosome start end, and uh, all those information include the axon, what is the axon start and end region. So in you, in this way, you can download the, the annotation file from the UCSC gene browser. There are also some other genome browser like Genome Graph and Genome Sorter. Uh, 
not going to talk too much about other tools. It, you can see all the tools are listed over here. If you are interested in any of them, you can go back to check more detail. Uh, the last uh, linear gene browser is uh, from the Wolfio epigenome browser. This gene browser is very powerful and can handle like long-term interaction, long chromatin interaction, you know, like cross chromosome or cross different location. We can plot a very, you know, very beautiful view, beautiful figure from the uh, gene browser. Let's take a look at the Washio epigenome browser. So the Washio genome browser, this is a uh, uh, address of the gene browser. You can just search epigenome browser and uh, Google will lead you to this same location. And uh, let's take a look at the panel. What is the, uh, let's see what's the difference. So this is a watch your uh, epigenome browser. So this is the home page, and uh, you can just click. Uh, this works, uh, works on the watch your epigenome browser. And uh, it's quite different from uh, UCSC gene browser. For UCSC gene browser, every time you open uh, the gene browser, at least you clean your, tra your track, and you always see the same tra same uh, view from last time. But you see, uh, watch your gene browser, you, every time you have to open uh, everything, and uh, you lost the track of everything once you refresh the page. And uh, by default, you, uh, we have to load uh, some tracks because uh, it does not load any track itself. And uh, we, need, uh, we will load some public hubs. Like uh, here, I will just load uh, the root map data from GO. There are totally 2,700 uh, tracks mean 2,700 samples of it. After load, you can see from the background it's load, already load, and then you can just click the close, and uh, you see those are track loaded from the, uh, from the you, what you database. So, so this is the H3, K4, ME3, and it's one pair. Everything is one, it's, it's in pair. So this H, Three, cap four, me one, and three. So those are for the activation uh, signal, and uh, those regions S three, k nine, and S three, k ten seven are for the repression uh, signal region. And uh, you can see the pattern are quite different. And this S three, k four, me three, you are for the promoter region, and this is the uh, you are for the enhancer region. And uh, this is like uh, another protein binding to this region and in. And repress the uh, uh, gene expression. So this is the methylation sequence. You can see the frequency of methylation in blue. You can see this is the 80, uh, 81 percent of methylation in CBG site, and the background gray is the uh, uh, red depth. And uh, this is a chrome HMM. It is an annotation to the sequence in the genome. Like what is the? Uh, I can click. For active site transcription of gene, uh, transcription, weak transcription, and also enhancer repressed, weak repressed. So you can see the high, the light color always comes with the enhancer or activation signal, and the dark color comes with the repression uh, signals. So you can see the pattern over here. So this region, there's a activation marker, activation signal over here. You can see the color is light. And this is like repression, protein binding place for the repression. You can see the color is pretty dark over here. Navigation, I'm not going to talk about uh, too much about navigation. It's very similar. You can you know, search gene name, uh, co coordination, um, like SNP ID, and you can zoom in, zoom out, and uh, this is like more left and more right. It's, uh, it's different from IGV. It's more left, right, not more back 
and uh, move, move forward. So this is the default track and uh, annotation track. If you want to load more track, you click over here. Like, so this is the public track. It will go back to this formula page over here. You can load different track. And uh, previously we load a roadmap from GO. There are totally 20, uh, 700 tracks, but by default we can see all, we load all in like third, or maybe more than 10 tracks over here. All other tracks are not loaded. If you want to load any other tracks from the same GitHub, GitHub is, a, is like a collection of, it's like one study include a lot of samples, and each sample is one track. If we want to load other tracks from the same GitHub, you, you can just click here. You can see you already load, uh, so this is total number, the green number is total number of tracks, and the red is a number of tracks already load, and it, it, it has a, you know, classified to different type of the tracks, like uh, this is the expression track, and uh, you can click into like cancer type, if, I, if you want to load this, just click this and add one track. The track will be added to the, to the previous view. So see, see so at the end of the track. Anyway. You can also, you know, upload your own track to the to the browser, and uh, uh, use what you in the browser also support a lot of file format over here. Uh, even though it's not so comprehensive like IGP, but yeah, the most common tracks file, uh, most common file sequencing file are, are already supported over here. So in previous, um, we already learned that we can share the, the view and track with the collaborator in, with the session. And uh, Washio, IP Genome also provide a uh, session for the uh, view saving and uh, sharing. So if you go to app and uh, session over here, you can see every time you open one of the what's your epigenome browser, you will open a session. And uh, if you refresh the browser, you will got another session. That's the reason why you know every time you refresh the gene browser, you see another you know all the track information are totally lost. And you can like uh, save current track like uh, p test save one track is saved over here. And uh, like if you keep the track, this information like I accidentally you know close a uh, session and uh, when I open it, it's no longer there. I want to go back to the previous. Uh, I want to go to the previous view, and uh, if you have the session ID, you can just go back to apps and uh, session and uh, input the session ID over here and uh, click the retrieve. You can see what you already saved uh, the information will, the track, the view will be loaded over here. And uh, you can also like add some modification to this track. Let's get this loaded. I did some, I went to analogy. I went to BRC1, different, quite different location. So I can save this track, I can save this session, this view as a subset of the session. Like uh, BRCA1, and uh, click Save. 
you can see multiple view in the same session. And uh, if you want to go back to this, you just click this. And you, if you want to go to a different view, you can just click that and go back to that. So in that way, you know, it's, uh, you can also download the track, the, like the, all those information to a file. And you can also share the link to someone else to you know, go back to the, uh, to the view of the genome. It's a session. So in also you can save the results. Take a screenshot, and uh, you, like you want to the view of the data to be published in the paper, and you need a figure, and you can just click to generate the figure. So this is a PDF file, and uh, all the track are show over here. Let's go back to the screen short. And uh, another thing is a gene, gene set view, like IGV, you can do the gene set view. And the UCSC genome browser can also do that. You can upload the, the specific region and do that. Let's see what you can do with, uh, with what you, and what's the difference. So you go to, uh, go to apps and uh, click the gene set gene and region set, and you add a new set, like you just need to paste the gene names. I have those genes. The same uh, TP53 pathway genes, and I uh, just paste over here. There are totally four genes. And uh, just uh, TP53, name it, and uh, submit. So this, this is a list of gene. And uh, you can just click the list of gene and uh, then click gene set view. So you can see the first gene is MD, M4, and the second gene, and three, third, and the fourth gene. You can zoom in the genes and see more details. And uh, you can move, uh, move back and forth. But you can see those two genes are connected to each other. You cannot see the region beyond that region. You can only see those four genes, the region, the code region of those four genes. And uh, let's go back to gene set view. And we have the same set uh, over here. And you, sometimes we, like we previous did in IGV, we want to see the promote region. And you can change the region. Like you want to see three KB promoter and gene body, and only the promoter. Or sometimes we just like our data with uh, IGV. I upload 2,500 and upstream and 500 downstream for the promoter, the whole promoter region. And you can do the same thing. Like this is 25 to the left upstream, and you can go to download downstream of 500. OK, 500 region. And uh, click the close, and go back to the side view, and click the gene side view. So now we will go to the gene side view, but folks are only on the promoter region, like 20. 2,500 and 500 up and downstream. So you can see this is the, this is the coding region. And uh, we have uh, 2,500 upstream and uh, 500 downstream for all the genes. You can see the signals in the promote region. There are lots of signals. And uh, in the gene set view, You can let's go to the gene set view and uh, go back to this. You can do scatter plot. 
like uh, from this set, we want to see this track S three K K four and S three K four M D one, and to see the scatter plot of for those four gene. What is the distribution of the those four gene at this uh, at, at this uh, two track? You can see this is uh, those are the four genes and uh, the signal in those at, at those track. You can also do. The gene plot to plot the signals like box plot, line, or gene path, path or clustering, and uh, set you select this. Set. We have only one, so it's selected by default. You can select the different track and uh, plot like box plot of signals at this lo at different location, and after click this button, you will see the box plot. That's for the gene set. If you want to close, just click here. It will go back to the regular view. So I am a plot. I'm a plot is very powerful. Sometimes you know we have a lots of tracks over here. It's very difficult to handle. And uh, if, we, if we want to see multiple track in one in one row, you we can like hold the shift key and click multiple track and then click the apply mat plot. In this way you can see we plot all four track in one in one track. So one all four samples in one track. You can also change, like configure to change the color for different track. You can select the different colors. So that's for the um, a plot, my plot, and uh, my plot, and also we already talking about the gene and the region side. So the most important thing about uh, epigenome browser is a long-range chromatin interaction. It can sh handle very complex, uh, like different chromosomes or different long-distance interaction between uh, sequence. Let's go back to the track, and uh, I will remove all the tracks. And I uh, will. So the public track has. I uh, will load this one. Long range chromatin interaction experiment. And uh, if you go back to the track, you can see here you can see long range interaction. There are lots of tracks over here. And uh, you can select whatever track you are interested in. Here I just, you know. Use a search function to find the uh, geopet track. So let's take a look at this. I the track. So by default, the the long, the, this is from the GFAT sequence. And uh, you can see it is, uh, there's a line connect different region of the chromosome. It shows the interaction between the chromosome region. And uh, we can set up uh, some of the, like you can see by default it's, uh, it's arc view. And you, change, you can change it to heat map or full or density or different, uh, different view. And uh, let's make it, uh, Clear for the lines. Like, uh, I want to set up the threshold, lower threshold. You can see the interaction between different regions. Like this part is interacted with this part. 
and uh, this is a long range across the chromosome. Sometimes we, you know, the interaction happen across chromosome, like chromosome one and chromosome seven. So right now we are work, work we are on. Um, this is with chromosome. So we want to see the long, even long range interaction. You can just right click and uh, select the circle view. You can see we are on Chrome 7, and then we can see this region also interact with uh, this region, this chromosome 12, and uh, chromosome 5 at this location, and uh, chromosome X, and the chromosome this one, chromosome 9. You can see the interaction with even very long distance regions. So this is for the chair pad. And another is a high seek data. High seek, let's take a look. What, is the, what we can see from high seek? So by default, you can see this is hard seek data. Hard seek data is uh, like more like local interaction, not too far away. You can see those region, like those two region from left and right side, like this region has a uh, like more dense uh, interaction, uh, dense color and so more interaction. And uh, we can zoom out to see even more interactions. So this is a, by default, a 2D heat map to show the interaction between uh, long distance range. So this is very powerful. You know, we, we did not see any other gene browser yet that can support like Long range interaction. This is uh, and the circle view is very, it's pretty cool. And uh, for the chromatin uh, high seed data. And, and so those are three linear uh, gene browser can show, you know, you know, align all the chromosome in one line and, uh, uh, you know, to see all those uh, rays one by one. This is more like linearly to show. Another one very popular too is uh, circles that. You know, the circus is a software for these data visualization and the information in the circle view. So the benefit of circle view is like you can, like previously in the uh, watch your genome browser, we, we can see the interaction from one chromosome to different location. And uh, so it's very convenient to see the long range interaction. That's uh, you know the purpose of uh, people uh, develop circles just uh, to show, realize the geno genomic structure variation you know from long distance, and this is a figure uh, from the from the website from the circles website. You can see there are lots of information over here, uh, the different chromosome and uh, lots of annotation, uh, the links between different chromosome location and also heat map and uh, all those information. <coughs> heat map, tile, histogram, lots of information in, in, the, in the figure. Installation of the circuits is uh, pretty easy, uh, but also difficult. So, I mean, easy, I mean, circuitry is very easy to install. You just download the salt package and unzip, uh, that's it. But circuits depends on other software, and you have to install other software. The most important thing is that you have to uh, install a lot of, it is based on, on, on per, so you have to install a lot of per modules before get the circuits run. 
and uh, most importantly, you have run, you have to install TD, and the TD is independent of Perl. You have to install TD package, uh, TD library before you run. It is available because it's Perl based. It is available on Windows and or Linux, and but. But Circus does not have like interface that previously we have IGP or UCC in a very beautiful, uh, very beautiful interface and uh, very handy. You can just you know click with mouse. But for Circus, it's all command line and uh, just uh, just like you used on the Linux system, you have to run everything and the command line. Uh, on Windows, it's pretty easy. You can install like Strawberry Perl programming and get all the packages ready. And in Linux, you have to, after you download circles, you have to run circles dash models to check if any model are missed. If, if any model are missed, you have to run with, you know, with CPAN or any other uh, model management system to get it installed. Uh, how then the, does the circle works? So, circle you, you just run the circle command in the command line. It's uh, like you run DOS or Linux. And uh, the most important file, first file is the main configuration file, is the circles.config. And you run circles command and uh, dash config and then circles, the configuration file. If the, if the Configuration file is the circles.config. You can just run circles without you know those uh, parameter. It will generate. It will uh, the circles will go through all the configuration file, and the main configuration file will load other configuration file because sometimes we put different configuration in different file to make it you know the work. Uh, sometimes we reuse parts of the code and we like we. Uh, for the ideogram, we don't change the ideogram. Uh, we don't change, change the text configuration file. We just put all those in separate file. And each time we have new program, we just load those file. Uh, the, the main configuration file, we load file from, uh, we load uh, you know, the configuration file uh, from outside. And also the configuration file will tell circles where to find the data file, like uh, where the data for the histogram or you know, segment and uh, karyotype data information. And uh, the, all those data, all those files will go to circles, and the circles will process all those configuration and uh, generate two files, PNG file and SVG file by default. It, uh, you know, the, it's not quite easy to run the program. You have to, you know, you have to input the command, but circles can generate very beautiful figures, the circular figures. So let's take a look, uh, break look at the configuration file. Uh, configuration file specifies the image render, like color, font, uh, uh, and all those information. Uh, this is the uh, syntax for the configuration. It's like a variable equal, you know the. The, the value, and uh, sometimes uh, you know the the assignment is put is embedded in, in a block, and you can put it in a block, and the block can be can nested in another block. Like you have a ideogram, and you have a spacing under the ideogram, and uh, like I said, you know, the main configuration file can load a separate uh, uh, configuration configuration file for different purpose. Like for the color font and the shape pattern, it always load from this file. And for the system and debug parameter, it always load from the housekeeping files. And the circles has a, sometimes we need to define like the length of image uh, or, or figures. So this is the unit used in, in in circles, like a B mean base, P is pixel, and R is relative, like 20%, 30%, and U is a special crown unit. Let's take a look at the example. 
uh, circuits provide a very, you know, it's not easy to run, uh, not easy to use to generate a beautiful figure, but it provides a very detailed uh, uh, tutorial online. So this is, uh, let's take a look at the figure first. So this is one of the figures generated by the, by the circuits. It's uh, very simple, and uh, there are uh, three, four, four regions, quantum regions, and uh, there are lots of links between, you know, different regions. And uh, let's take a look at the configuration file. So the main configuration file is circus.config. It defines the uh, type and the uh, unit and all those information. And also here the color for different uh, chromosome. And uh, this is a link. Link. The surface will, so this is data file. So there are three, two types to our, one is the configuration file, one is the data file. Data file is, you know, for the link, it's, uh, it's, loaded, it's loaded from here. Let's take a look at the link file. So this is a carry tab from, for the human genome. This is like defined the chromosome. This is the name, the Second one is a label, a simple label, and the, crumb, uh, the chromosome start and uh, those sides. This is uh, for the color. So we later we see the color defined uh, definition for those things. And uh, this is uh, for the segment, uh, for the link. This is for the link. We can see for the link from the first chromosome, this region linked to another chromosome to another region. So that's that part defines the uh, links. And uh, so this is, uh, like you can see, the 0.8R means the radius is 8%. And uh, some of them is, uh, has different. Uh, so this is radius is a little, bit, a, bit, a little bit bigger. You can see the figure is like they are not in the same scale. And uh, the ideogram, loaded the ideogram, and loaded the tick file and the image file, and also two, diff two files, configuration file must be loaded for every single server's uh, configuration. So this is the ideogram configuration. I'm not going to give too much detail. And uh, let's take a look what, what, what does it look like. So this is already have a success installed, and uh, also I downloaded the tuition tutorial documents. Uh, this is one of the tutorial for the for the same example over here. So this is figure will be generated from the command. You can see here I already have the figure. Let me remove. Those figures, and uh, take a look. There are three files: the main configuration file, circus config, and uh, two other will be loaded by, by the main configuration file, the ideogram and the text configuration. And also, there are some other data file. It's not saved in the same folder, but it is saved somewhere else. Um, it's defined. Uh, uh, in the circles configuration or ideogram or take uh, configuration file. And let's r run circles. I already tell the system we are to find the command circles. Otherwise, you have to, you know, give the, tell the system we are to find the, the, the program. So if I just run circles without uh, you define which configuration file, it will load the, you know, the circles.config as the as as info, input. So after the while, well, you can see two files are generated. One is a circus.png and circus.svg. Let's take a look. The file. PNG file will, will have this figure in the PNG. And SVG is another file, uh, same file, but it's a digital file 
for the same thing. You can see much more detail for the figures. And uh, there are also some other Gino browser plugin. So it's like uh, uh, you build a website and you have lots of data you want to show, share with people, and uh, uh, you want to put it uh, in the Gino browser to see you know, uh, your reads or some you know, annotation in the, across the genome. And in that way, you need something to add, you know, uh, to work with your web page. And uh, there are lots of options over here. Here, just list uh, some G bros and G bros and found uh, the links. And uh, so, Doug Liu's lab also, uh, has uh, one project use the last uh, use the last uh, plugin to visualize. Uh, to realize the data. Let's take a look. Take a little while. Let's go come back a little while later and see the results. So um, this is some like plug-in or standalone software you can embed it in your website. And uh, also R and uh, R is a very comprehensive statistical environment uh, uh, and programming language for professional data analysis and also for the visualization. It's very flexible, you know, to draw pictures with R. And uh, most of the time it is used for the statistical analysis. And uh, at the same time, you can use it to and the Bioconductor is uh, one of the project. It provides a lot of packages for analysis of high throughput uh, genomic data, start from the microarray data processing and uh, correlation, and uh, run right now for the next generation sequencing, like IGR, GeneSeq, uh, lots of software, software is available. And for the NGS data visualization, also there are some authors provide uh, several packages that, that is available for this purpose. Uh, I'll pick up, uh, you know, two over here, you can take a look, we can just take a look at, at what it can do. So this is the figures from one of the GBase pack, package. It aims to provide a, you know, structured visualization framework to plot all the type of data like what, what we see in the gene browser. Sometimes we can explore, export the data from the gene browser, but sometimes if we have a, like a flexible option, we can you know, do more modification to the figures in R. And uh, here's a comparison of gene browser. IGV is a standard along. All those are, uh, USAC what you are web-based, and uh, Circus is a standard along. But it, Circus generate only statics, static figures. You cannot do interactive. Like IGV can handle local file. You can, if you have a bank file or you know any other file in your computer, you can just use IGV. But the figure is generated is not so so beautiful. USAC is very powerful. It has a lot of annotation. Um, uh, what you can generate a very brilliant, brilliant, very beautiful figures. Circus, yeah, you you can generate a very beautiful figure, and everything is local. Uh, is, but circuit is not interactive. For the sharing, for IGV, you can share with the session, and the UCC, you can share with the link uh, of session, and uh, what you always share with, the, with session. And the circuit is static, and uh, you can only share with picture. And uh, gene set view, all those three are capable of gene set view, but differ slightly. For the interaction, the what you the only software can do the interaction view. And uh, for the new reference, like you work on reference that is not existing in the database, um, IGB is a good option. And service can do whatever you like. Uh, let's go back, see if the result is. 
So this is a this is embedded uh, in the browser. It's um, very generated, very beautiful, and can embed it uh, in your in your web page. That's for today's lecture. Um, any